Today I am testing multiple brushes for miniature painting to find out which one is the best option. Oh hey, this is pretty good. You see, many painters will tell you that premium brand brushes are great choices for this hobby. And while that's true, do you really need expensive brushes? To see the difference, I prepared three small minis for a small experiment with our small brushes. And given the tiny details on these minis, it'll test the precision of these brushes to their limit. And to set the baseline, let's look at the expensive option first. A single size one Artis Opus brush costs 15 pounds. But if you live in a country without universal healthcare, it'll be 23 freedom dollars. And for us, folks in the EU, it's 20 euro. <sighs> That is a hefty price, so let's see what you get. As you can expect, base coating with a brush of this caliber is not any different. I mean, it's base coating, what did you expect? Despite the fact you don't have to be very precise this early on in the process, it's still better to have sharper brushes to base coat detailed minis. Once you get to base coat the rest of the miniature, it's necessary to avoid the parts you already painted. With a brush that holds the tip as nicely as this one, it's not a problem at all. However, it's really at the latter stages where it truly shines. Picking out tiny little details and even layering on top of them would be difficult without a sharp tip on your brush. However, these fine Kolinsky sable brushes not only have that, but they also retain a lot of paint and have a little bit of a spring. It's exactly this Kolinsky sable hair that makes these brushes expensive, yet high quality. So it's no wonder that it has become the staple of mini painting world. Now, obviously, this might be a bit different depending on what kind of techniques are you using. So if I wanted to stipple heavily or dry brush a lot, these fine brushes wouldn't last long. What I'm testing here, though, is pretty standard paint application on some of the smallest miniatures you would typically paint. With a size 1 brush, I have no problem painting anything I want. Even size 2 brush would probably do the trick, but I already abused the ever-living shit out of it by stippling like an absolute madman. However, if you don't abuse them like I do, you'll be fine, and the tip will stay nice and sharp. And with the first Goblin miniature done, we have a proper baseline to compare the rest. Also, you should subscribe. I heard that you'll be blessed by the Emperor and your dig will grow 5 inches. Not like you need it. Da Vinci Maestro Series 35 is my favorite brush. I buy a single size 1 brush like this for around 11 to 12 dollars. But it really depends on the retailer. So, how does it perform? Yeah, it base coats nicely, I'll skip that. What really matters when painting details, though, is whether it can hold the tip well. Yeah, it's all about holding the tip. <clears throat> it's only when the tip stays sharp that you can pick out all the edges and details properly. This brush has no problem in this regard either. More interestingly though, the belly of this brush is bigger than the size 1 Artis Opus brush. So it can retain more moisture, so you can paint longer without reaching to your palette. Feature like that is especially useful when applying washes or glazes, but it doesn't hurt for anything else. It's pretty simple, when you have more bristles in your brush, the more moisture it can retain. So by that logic, very small brushes like this one are not useful when painting with acrylics. If you ever try that, you'll see that the brush will dry very quickly, because it doesn't have enough bristles to retain moisture. Actually, this moisture retention problem is the reason why many painters often use brushes marked as watercolor brushes. It's true that if you are using these brushes for the thick, <laughs> artist-grade acrylics on a canvas, they probably wouldn't last long. However, hobby paints are usually much thinner and we dilute them even further. So watercolor brushes, which are much more dense and can retain more paint, are a better fit over synthetic brushes but we'll see about that. The only problem I have with this brush is that sometimes there is a stray bristle here and there. This is kinda annoying, but you can fix the tip by twirling it on a palette or licking the brush. So the tip can be fixed by licking. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna stop now. If the bristles go crazy on you, it can really hinder your progress. At this rate, it's really not that bad, and it usually happens to brushes with longer bristles anyway. But, once you see that the tip is splitting, that's when you have to either clean your brush properly or throw it out. 
Luckily, it's only sometimes that my Da Vinci brushes have a stray hair and they never had a splitting tip. However, as far as I remember, uh, these Artis Opus brushes never had either of these. We will talk about this problem more later, but now, when you compare these two miniatures, I don't think there is a noticeable difference in quality. But we still have to test the... Cheap synthetic brushes like this cost from one to two dollars. And the only characteristic that I cared about is, again, just the tip. Even if you buy some cheap brushes, if the tip is nice, it's still viable. Or is it? Right away, I've noticed this weird, icky feeling when I dip the brush into my little paint puddle. The best way to describe it is as if the synthetic bristles weren't absorbing the paint properly. The feeling was similar when I applied the paint on the miniature. It was like the paint doesn't flow as easily, but again, barely any different when base coating. Once I got to put down more than the first layer, I kinda understood that this brush doesn't respond well to the pressure I apply. I'm sure that many people wouldn't even notice that, but if you paint a lot, this is certainly a new and unpleasant feeling. Whenever I try to make some softer brush strokes, they ended up being too visible instead. So depending on the applied pressure, I was either painting a bit too much or not at all. Of course, you can combat this by using different dilution, wicking off the excess paint and using more layers. So it's not like this is a deal breaker for the cheap synthetic brushes, but depending on your painting style, it might make the process a bit longer. By the way, I do realize that not all of the painting process is in this video, but if you want the unedited footage for the three goblin miniatures, it's on my Patreon. Anyway, there is one part of the process where cheap synthetic brushes really outperformed my expectations. The cheap synthetic brush did outstanding job when painting the tiny little eyes. So in the end, I managed to paint three layers. One for the yellow white, one for the red iris, and a white reflection. The placement is almost exactly where I want it, but still, this is way better than I expected. So other than the fact that I had to get used to this unresponsiveness to pressure, the precision was still pretty good. Even when blacklining certain parts, I don't think that you'd be able to see the difference in result. I also painted this little freehand on the yellow shield, and that also worked. But given that the tip isn't as sharp as its natural hair counterpart, and sometimes you apply more paint than you want, it took a fair bit longer as I had to make some corrections. When I really think about it, this side-by-side -side comparison tells you the whole story. Cheap synthetic brushes usually have a tip that isn't as sharp, so you can't be as accurate. This will be mostly noticeable when doing freehands, highlighting the edges, etc. It's still possible to do that just fine, but it'll take you longer. So sure, you can make the argument that side by side the miniatures look pretty damn similar. But if you have a choice between the tool that makes the job easier and a tool that you kinda have to work around, the winner is clear. Or is it? Well, I, I kinda have to answer that now, don't I? And more importantly, do you really need expensive brushes? Comparing the three options, I have something to say about each of them before we can make the judgment. The cheap synthetic brushes are, well, cheap. The one that I was using costs between one and two dollars, and for that you get a durable brush with a pretty decent tip. It's true that synthetic brushes lose the tip way faster than the nicer natural hair brushes, but given the price range, it won't straight up murder your wallet to replace them. However, I don't think that you can match the flow, the feel and the precision of a natural hair brush. But if you do stuff like hard stippling and dry brushing and shit like that, then obviously these might be better for the task. The mid-range natural hairbrush is in my opinion a significant improvement. The tip is even sharper, it usually lasts longer and the paint delivery is smoother. This really is something that you kinda have to feel for yourself and you won't see that demonstrated properly on miniatures. However, I'll put some resources in the description which do show it well. The downside of natural hair is that there is higher likelihood of stray bristles and splitting of the tip. 
When it comes to this particular expensive brush, it has all the upsides and I didn't experience any stray hair, any tip splitting, but it is expensive. So which one should you get? Well, if we look back at the results again, I don't think there is a significant difference in quality across the minis. So if you are on a tight budget, picking the cheapest option is not a problem. Just be careful to get the brushes with a nice tip like this and you're good. And especially if you are painting armies to like a tabletop standard, maybe you won't appreciate the superior precision and flow of natural hair brushes. However, if you do care about the details, you wanna be in sync with your tools and not fight them, I think that you'll benefit tremendously from getting natural hair brushes. But do they have to be the most expensive ones? Well, no. I truly think that once you get a Kolinsky sable brush, for the most part, you can't go wrong. It's not always the case that the more you pay, the better brush you have. In fact, some of the most expensive brushes are from Winsor & Newton Series 7, and I can't recommend them, because every other brush I buy is splitting the tip for some reason. But maybe it's just a bad luck. So when it comes to brands that I personally like, it's definitely Artis Opus, which I have no issues with, aside from the price tag, and then Da Vinci Maestro Series 35, which are still fantastic, but sometimes a random stray hair appears. You can still fix it just fine, but if you really hate it, get a Da Vinci Maestro Series 10, where this doesn't happen because the bristles are shorter. Honestly, brushes are mostly about your preference. And sure, you can paint something with an absolute dog shit of a paintbrush, but you want your tools to work for you, not against you. But of course, a paintbrush is just one of the painting tools for miniature painting. And another very useful tool is an airbrush. But do you actually need it? Well, I made a similar video where I answer exactly that question. So if you are wondering if you need an airbrush for yourself, check it out. And see you there.